Well, welcome, guys. Uh, we uh, we started off this week really, you know, for us, a week starts on a Sunday as we move forward and uh, learn from the first experience. And uh, um, obviously, watching the film, there's plenty of things we can grow from uh, naturally. Going from week number one to week number two in any season, uh, there is always an opportunity for growth and, and to make a big jump. Um, uh, we had a very efficient Sunday and uh, excited to see the players around the facility this morning and today and, and getting started on the next opportunity, which brings another Power Five opponent in our first home game right here to Albertson Stadium. Um, so we will uh, we'll work diligently t uh, through today and, and uh, create a plan that we're going to be able to uh, make simple and concise to the players in all three phases so that uh, you know we can uh, be more consistent as we spoke about after the game on Saturday. Um, there were plenty of uh, opportunities for us there where we were in rhythm in our last uh, opportunity where we played uh, you know in character but we definitely have to clean up uh, um, some of the things that we made mistakes in that first uh, opportunity, which is very correctable stuff, as we turn on the film and watch, it's uh, um, basic fundamentals, um, some things that will keep us in rhythm, being on the same page, as we always talk about winning the pre-snap and communicating uh, to get ourselves in rhythm and to keep ourselves in rhythm. So um, again, we had a very efficient Sunday. Um, like where the team is at right now, they came back yesterday and worked. Um, and, and again, is already in the facility this morning on their day off. Uh, uh, getting squared away with some stuff academically and obviously getting prepared for uh, the next opportunity. Both, uh, both Cougar and uh, Genty after the game, you know, told us, you know, hey, you know, this is not acceptable. We have to, we have to get better. Cougar said, you know, hey, we're not going to quit fighting. How pleased were you with kind of the response for the guys after such a tough loss? Yeah, I mean, I'll say this, and, and I've already said it, like, love this team. We got, we got some un unbelievable guys. Um, we uh, even leaving the game, we didn't need to watch the film to know like some of the things that we, we can and we need to be more consistent with. And that's the approach this team has had. Um, so um, excited about that. And obviously, that's why I say we had uh, an, a very efficient and productive Sunday and moving into a Monday. Um, and and uh, obviously, can't wait to get back on, on the field tomorrow and get rolling. Yep. This is kind of, it feels like this is kind of out of the frying pan and into the fire here. You've got another talented quarterback this week. How do you feel, um, or what is your assessment of UCF's kind of dual threat quarterback? Yeah, there's no question. Another dynamic quarterback into the second week um, that, that has a lot of personnel, a lot of talent, a lot of speed around him. Uh, coming to play another offense that is uh, was very, very productive in the first week and is coming out of the first week as the number one offense. Uh, you know, in terms of yards and put up a lot of points in the first game. Uh, but we see a quarterback who is uh, very efficient through the air within their, their uh, plan of attack in the, in the past game and is one of the fastest players on the field as well. Um, he's proven to do that over the course of the last two years in terms of being able to uh, uh, be a, a numbers. Uh, he is obviously a number in the run game that you got to account for. Then obviously in the passing game, being able to extend or turn a pass play into a run play with uh, his explosiveness. It seems like UCF in a lot of ways is kind of like you guys in the run game, two great running backs, a, a dual threat quarterback. Uh, I mean, how do you, what's kind of the plan of attack uh, against them? Yeah, so the number one deal is we're going to get a, a, a lot of offense, okay, in terms of the amount of formations and um, uh, the motions uh, in the pre-snap and how those formations change. And so it's really, it's going to come down to um, being exceptional in the pre-snap with identifying, being able to leverage formations, move ahead of the uh, movers in terms of our communication and, and knowing the adjustments and where our eyes are going uh, so that uh, we can handle the numbers that uh, brings basically, you know, there's a potential for triple option numbers and being able to handle the quarterback's number within the run game. Uh, the way your offensive line played, I mean, I, th I don't think they had a penalty. Uh, you guys average nearly five yards a carry, only give up yeah. one sack. Um, how do you how do you feel like that that group played? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, there's you know, there's there's a lot of for the first quarter and, and up until nine minutes into that second quarter, we were in character and we were playing, we were in rhythm. It wasn't perfect by any means, but we were doing a good job at the line of scrimmage. Um, um, on both sides of the ball, we want to find a way to create more pressure, you know, on the quarterback defensively, but at, at, on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, we played pretty well. Um, and there was a gap in there 
uh, you know, in that second quarter of about seven minutes where we fell out of character. And we've got to be able to have that next play mentality where we, we snap right back next play um, and focus on the plan and execute our responsibility. And ultimately, that starts with us as coaches and making sure that we don't have those laps in, in how we prepare, how we train, um, and get our guys ready. Because, um, yeah, up until nine minutes in the, in the second quarter against the number 10 team in the nation, we were winning nine to seven. And then we gave up 21 points. We fell out of rhythm on offense. We had some three and outs and uh, an uh, interception. And, you know, those are things that we can fix. And when we, we knew that coming out of the game, but when you go back and watch the film, it is very evident that it is very controllable things that uh, we can, uh, that we've already started to work on. Andy, 38 yards rushing, 28 carries. I mean, 4.9 and the longest run from scrimmage was 13 yards. Like, that's very consistent in the run. What did you see after watching the film and digesting everything? What's your confidence level in this running game right now? Yeah, you know, so I really, you know, I'll say this. I was, uh, I was excited about how our O-line played. And obviously, it's not just the O-line. It's, it's the tight ends. It's the wide receivers blocking as well. Um, but um, to be able to see the way we played against that defensive front last week, um, what we were able to do, uh, we had uh, two freshmen playing, um, you know, obviously a lot of football in there. And then with the guys that have played a lot of football, we've said all along we like the way the leaders are building the mentality of in, in creating, you know, an identity. Uh, it's going to be no different this week. Uh, you know, UCF has a talented, uh, big, athletic front. Um, so we're going to have a huge challenge again. It's going to carry over into this week, and we're, it's, it, this week it's going to demand us to even be better than we were last week, uh, given the challenges we had. But um, like where we're at um, and what we can build off of in the run game um, and having a, a good plan to make sure that we can use the run game to keep us on track, keep us in rhythm. A lot of 21 with UCF. Similarities, differences. In Sorry, there. say it again. You guys open 21 with UCF. Yes. Similarities, differences between that UCF team and this one? Yeah, offensively, um, there's some similarities. Um, different quarterback, I would say that um, there is, they've, they've gotten some speed into the critical. I mean, there's speed everywhere at their skill positions, their running back positions. Um, so uh, from, the, from the structure, from what we've seen uh, last night and this morning, there's, there's a lot of things that are similar. Um, the, again, there's a lot of offense. Uh, Gus has done a great job of putting together this package within his offense and has been very successful everywhere he's been. Um, and, you know, Henshaw's done a really good job. I mean, you can see what he's done with the philosophy, and he's been a part of this before, and, and so he knows it, and, and they were clicking on all, all cylinders uh, last week. You look online at the tickets, it seems like there's a decent amount of tickets still left for Saturday. I mean, how badly do you need a, a packed house uh, for a big game like this? Yeah, there's no question. We get this opportunity to have a, you know, a, a talented team, you know, a Power 5 team come in like this, and to be able to uh, fill Albertson Stadium is, you know, that home field advantage and to be able to have it loud and, and to be able to play in front of Bronco Nation here, it's a big deal. Talk about the last couple of years about the, the home record here and the standard there of winning on the blue and stuff. What uh, I, I know that's obviously the emphasis to get back to that, but how is there anything you're doing differently or how, just trying to how, how do you get back to, to making this a place that you know nobody wants to come in and play? Well, I think the number one thing is always is just focusing on the preparation, you know, and and uh, you know, understanding what it looks like to prepare diligently. And obviously, I said it that starts with us and making sure we're squared away um, on on what it looks like in all three phases. And, and it really starts, you know, again, with our preparation, even on our day off on a Monday. And uh, the urgency and the focus and the diligence that goes into preparing, that's what it's always been about. And then it creates a, a confidence and a mentality then when game day comes along to, to be able to uh, protect the blue. See it maybe because it won't be dark, I guess, but just the, all the new lights and the new scoreboard and all the stuff that the administration's trying to do to improve the, the atmosphere and just everything that's going on here. What, what's your take on all that and, and, and what the game day environment's going to be like? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, uh, you know, our administration has done a great job not only within Albertson Stadium of, uh, you know, creating and improving uh, the game day atmosphere they have in a lot of, uh, of our other sports as well. And it's that, that's, you know, our hats off to JD and the work that he's done and that he continues to do. I mean, it's I mean, JD is a tireless worker when it comes to those things, so it's exciting. That's uh, 
we're excited for Bronco Nation to come see, you know, and be a part of this first game and, and uh, getting this thing to a sellout would be a huge deal. See Mark Elry, I think, until the, the second half. Do you anticipate that, that he'll play more against UCF? Yeah, I mean, there's a progression that we want to make sure that we stay on given uh, the course of um, um, his return to play and, and making sure that, uh, um, again, this is a long season, right? And making sure that we build and we grow into this thing. And then uh, as, we, as we continue to progress throughout the year, we'll, we'll continue to see him more and more. When you go back, you look at the, the play of the, your, your receivers. How do you kind of assess their performance? and? Um, in certain situations, how, how much do you need them to go up and, and go, go get it at times? Like yeah, that? there's no question. And very much so, like we just spoke about, I mean, it's, it's not just the wide receivers, it's overall uh, level of consistency that, uh, you know, you get in those moments right there and, uh, and, and you get that experience of going against a team uh, like we did last week and, and having an understanding of how we competed at certain times and how we made plays, how we had explosive plays. You know, Steph had a big catch down the field. Um, Emac had one on the sideline where he toe tapped. You know now the consistency of bringing that you know together um, because there were there were lapses. There were lapses where we had some drops and again those are very correctable things. Um, coming down to focus and keeping the priority on getting the ball in our hands and then um, what we do with it after. Then you know obviously that's that's going to help us. So um, those are those are the things that you know we get into these games and, and we've got a schedule where we are going to play. We are going to play elite teams uh, week in and week out, and it's going to be a priority that we control the things that, that are very controllable. On that, uh, when you guys went for two on the weird formation there, what what was wrong? I mean, I didn't, was there actually a penalty, or did the refs miss that, or what? Was... Well, I mean, there was, uh, you know, within that, um, we can't move our feet, and um, we uh, it appeared that one of the guys had slightly moved his foot, so. They, they, you know, obviously called us on that, um, but we're not going to stop. Uh, we're not going to stop with the creativity and, and finding our opportunities uh, um, to create difficult situations. The secondary from last year to this year. I mean, last year, season opener, you got, you know, you got you let up a lot of passing yards against Oregon State. Came back and led the Mountain West in passing defense. What lessons do you take from last year um, to kind of say, hey, you know, this can turn this thing around? Yeah, there's no question, and, and that's that's the biggest part about that, about any first game is just the growth that comes from it, regardless of who you're playing. We got to see exactly where we are at and what are the things that we can continue to do better, and it was no different last year. Okay, We go right back to the most basic fundamentals, the emphasis and the things that we need to do to be more consistent, obviously uh, um, create a, a clear and concise plan as to exactly what it is we're doing and then building in um, the, the standard of which we need to operate every single day at practice so it becomes reaction, it becomes habit. And um, we decided, again, we got a group that we know that, that cares. Um, we got a coaching staff that cares about these guys and we're looking forward, that's football. We, you know, where you're at in the first week is definitely where you're not in the second week and not in the third and so on. Did you want Talon to run more against Washington, or were they doing something defensively that, that kind of limited that? Well, I think that the, most teams are going to have a game plan um, to make sure that that quarterback number, you know, is obviously uh, defended. And so at times there's going to be opportunities, and at other times there's not going to be based off of what a defense is working to take away. Um, and so for us as a, as a staff, we do have um, – well, I'll say in the last game, there were over 10 plays called that were read type plays, um, you know, for the quarterback. And so it really comes down to um, what we have in in terms of the structure and what a, what a defense is doing. Andy, you mentioned the word confidence. Um, what ways have you and your staff used in the past maybe to uh, build it up, maybe build it back, certainly with a big opponent coming in? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's ingrained into the process. You're going to learn from each one of these experiences that we have. It's, again, it's, it's, a, it's a season that involves growth from week to week, day to day. It all goes into the process, how we prepare, um, you know, not only how we prepare our players, but how we prepare a game plan in terms of how we teach it and how we implement it, and then being able to go and execute that together collectively throughout the course of the week. Um, in this game, that is the only real way to gain that confidence that obviously leads to the mentality that you can play with on game day. 
Andy, uh, you know, I know that after the game you guys were mentioning, you know, maybe eyes were out of place at times. How, how do you feel like your pre-snap communication was? I mean, in the, especially in the first half, for the most part, it felt like it was – but it seemed like it was all right. Well, again, if we're speaking, are you speaking about the defensive side of the ball or does the right. defensive side of the ball? So again, I mean, I mean, we we forced them to punt three times. You know, we we forced uh, them to punt three times there in the first quarter, into the second quarter, and then there were there were a few lapses within that communication, that eye control that we always stress. That's where it starts. Like eliminating explosive plays starts with that, and so again, there's very controllable things that. Um, um, we will emphasize uh, that we will build into patterns and build into the expectation, the standard of everything we do from the meeting rooms to the walkthroughs to the actual uh, team reps within practice. Is there any more explanation as to what was going on with the cleats or the slipping? You know, we've, we've dug into the, that because as you watch the film, it was uh, very evident and clear. Um, you, you turn on the film and you see it. There, there was a lot of slipping going on in the field. Um, we could got again. It's always about what you control. I mean, we focus on as a staff um, where our feet are when we're transitioning, where we're changing direction. Those that will be a huge emphasis. Um, but otherwise, I mean, we've we've worn those cleats before. Um, you know, obviously leading up through fall camp and the prep and stuff like that. It, it's not the first time those guys have put those cleats on. So um, we're uh, we're working to make sure that. We're not in that, that situation again because there was a fair amount on in all three phases of the game, whether it was on kickoff coverage, whether it was blitzers rushing near the quarterback and turning an edge and, you know, our feet were sliding out from underneath us, wide receivers coming out of breaks, DBs coming out of breaks. Do you bring typically one pair of cleats or two or what's kind of the standard? What's yeah, I mean, so it's not like the olden days where you can unscrew and, and it's, that's years and years ago. So... Uh, Nike makes one one pair of cleats now, and you know um, the bottoms are pretty consistent for what it is, uh, um, you know, for that playing surface. Did, did, did you have new turf or anything like that? I mean, Say it again. Did you have new turf or anything? I mean, like I, it, it was. I didn't know UW wasn't slipping right that much. It seemed like. Yeah. So you know, again, we, we got to work on the things that we can control, and that so that's our patterns of movement, um, how we change direction, and things like that. Um, so that, that will be the, the emphasis for us and making sure that, again, in, in, within our movements, our feet are underneath our hips. And it's always about, you know, feet before eyes and making sure that uh, we're doing everything we can. You spoke about UCF's offense. What about their defense? I mean, the numbers coming out of Kent State yeah. look pretty impressive. Sometimes. Yeah, again, I mean, it's a big physical. I mean, it's a fast defense now. Uh, they got some length in the secondary. We already spoke about the defensive front. Um, they were disruptive last year. They got some guys back from that front last year. Uh, they held um, their opponent to six points and, and really a limited amount of yardage uh, as, as, a, as a whole, you know, under 250 yards as a whole. So uh, they were pretty good in their first opportunity. And, and uh, there's, there's some, uh, there'll be definitely, as in any game, some matchup things that we got to be very aware of. Of, of UCF as a program and just what they've done the last couple of decades and obviously followed kind of in Boise State's footsteps with some of those big wins and, and undefeated seasons and then obviously parlayed that into the Big 12. Uh, how, you know, for a while, it was kind of the two programs that, you know, in the group of five everyone was looking at. How, how do you kind of look at what, where they're at, what they've done, and, and you know, how you guys obviously are trying to you know, be on that level? Yeah, so, I mean, they've, you know, as a big picture, you know, outlook on college football, you know, they've done a great job of, of growing um, not not just obviously uh, the football program. Um, the football program over the last decade has done a really really good job. I mean they've they've had uh, you know tremendous growth in what they've been able to do, but there are other sports as well. What's your assessment of just the D line in general? I mean they had some. Well, it seemed like you guys had good pressure early in the game, kind of trailed off. Obviously, run game you didn't get to see much from. But just overall, how what were you? Well, seeing that was one thing that you know obviously is going to be a huge component. We're facing you know the number one rush offense they ran the ball for 389 yards last game so um, while there wasn't a lot of rushing attempts felt like we played physical at the line of scrimmage with our defensive front um, we had some guys in there that you know were playing considerable amount of time for their first time the first play of the game you know was a run play in the way we attacked the line of scrimmage and you know we got a tfl there in that first play it was exciting to see and we continued on um, again, um, how we find our ways to create pressure on the quarterback is always going to be, you know, at a premium. Um, 
the way James played. I think after the last scrimmage, you, you expressed your excitement with the way that he was punting the ball. Um, not only to, to average what he did, but to limit returns too. Uh, how, how impressive was what he did? Yeah, 47 net. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty elite. That's more than good. That's pretty elite. So now being able to continue to do that and find ways, obviously, uh, um, to mix the windows up on our, our punt team in terms of the formations and things like that, that, uh, um, you know, punt return team's got to handle. Um, it's, it's always going to be a premium on uh, the snap uh, punter operation. Um, so the growth that we saw there from last year with James and now um, and obviously being able to continue to build off of that, but that was a huge part in the first game of flipping some field position. You know, it's not just that net has a huge, huge factor when it comes down to the overall field position throughout the course of the game. Early on, because we had an explosive on the first kickoff, the field position was, you know, the offense was starting backed up, and eventually we were able to flip that and, and get ourselves in better uh, situations there. And a lot of that has to do with how the whole team plays together and flipping that field from defense to then putting, you know, the special teams out there and what we're able to do with that to create. I mean, for your offense, I think in the first half, your average starting field position was like the 16 or 17. How hard is it, too, to yeah. offensively when you're having to go 85, 90 yards every drive? Yeah, I mean, that's so it just it starts off with all three phases playing together. With that first kickoff starting, you know, defense starting at the middle of the field, we, we went three and out there, but obviously the, they're, they're in a pin situation now, and it just creates. Now, we... The efficiency of the offense was there. I mean, we had the opportunity to move the sticks, um, but we dropped the ball on that first third down there that would have moved the sticks. And then even within that, when you got a guy that is efficient the way he is as a punter, even if you don't continue to move put the ball down the field, you now are in a position to actually flip the field. So it's all those small things within the game that when we talk about collectively uh, builds a level of consistency, those are the things that we're talking about that then have uh, uh, ramifications on the big picture. George Lee for a little bit, but when he yeah. came back, I mean, he was playing most of the game. What, what did you think of his performance? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome to see him battle through the way he did um, and come back into the game and, and was excited to see him back out there. You know, as George always, uh, whether, you know, the things that, that, you know, go unnoticed is probably uh, the way he protects. I mean, he did a, he did a good job within protection. Um, obviously, running the ball, he did a good job uh, um, getting up in between and running between the tackles. Um, and, and as always, you know, George is going to be a physical runner. Asked you about it since over the last couple months, but I saw you ran out on the field for the first time in warm up, and you had the visor with AW on, and a lot of guys around the program have talked about what Andrew meant to to this place, and, yeah. and obviously with his passing, what what did he mean to Boise State, and and what have these last yeah, couple I mean, months been he, like? he was, uh, you know, he's a rock in the in the program in terms of who he is as a person. You know, as a young man, um, Andrew was. Uh, extraordinary in a lot of ways not only like he's a very intelligent person that had an unbelievable personality but for a guy his age extremely diligent a guy that that learns extremely fast and uh um but but the overall theme is you know how andrew made you feel when he you and you're around him like he's just one of those people yeah he, he had an unbelievable impact in his time in this program building off that I did notice part of you guys wearing visors too. What, what was it about him and the visor that obviously is that make you know obviously makes you think about him? Well, I mean, it's just uh, you know again we're, we're like we said all along. I mean, he's going to live on through us and our experience and, and the opportunity that we got, the time we got to spend around him. Um, and so, you know, there's certain things that you know we continue to do around here. Um, that uh, no one sits in a seat um, in the team room here. Um, obviously, the visors are, are a tribute to him and as a, as a reminder to who he was and, and the impact he had on this program. We saw Ethan Card come out a couple times on some packages, third down stuff. Is that just kind of like an, him using him as an extra tight end or an extra blocker? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, again, to use our personnel to our advantage with, um, you know, getting a guy that is. Uh, you know, capable. Uh, can't wait to see him go down the field here with his number 19 jersey on. Um, I'm waiting for Bush to um, unleash that. But uh, it's a 
it's, it's it just shows you that if guys work and they compete and we'll find a role for them. And Ethan's been awesome here. Um, and again, it's it's what what the O line is building too. There's there's other guys too that are within that uh, that framework of guys that we want to get on the field. At, as we spoke before, that are developing behind the scenes right now and that are doing really good things. And um, as we always talk about building that dependable depth, it's it's got to be at all positions right now. You talked about protecting the blue line earlier. I mean, obviously you're going to want to do that no matter where in the season you are. But how much pr- do you guys take pride in the 21 year uh, home winning op- or opening home win streak at all? Or? I mean, there's a lot of things that we take pride in. I mean, being a part of this program, there's high standards. Um, you know, the, um, the things that we work towards and that we build in, you know, from January all the way until now, um, that got to create a foundation in, in, in what we do and how we operate and the mentality that comes with it. Um, so any opportunity we get to play on the blue, um, you know, we, we take great pride in that. Um, and as always, it's, it's always that one and oh mentality. It's, it's, this is a, the only game that matters right now. Our preparation and our focus is all on this. Asking you to give away the game plan, but how would you say um, Boise State's offense will evolve from week one to week two? Yeah, I mean, it, it, as we are early into that that process, as we go into this into the second week, um, you know, the thing that I would say is that watching the film from last week and as we're early in the stages of building this plan, there's definitely things that we can build off of that we did well. Um, uh, there's things that we did well in the past game. There's things we can clean up. Um, the variety of things that we have in the run game and being able to get to some of those things um, is going to be a, a critical component of this game. And so, um, you know, the the overall efficiency is where we want to see, you know, that's what really what we're focused on. It's not like um, things are going to drastically change, but from week one to week two where we make the biggest jump is within that efficiency. I think against the Air Force last year, you guys had like a, a number violation. I noticed Gavin Hambrick, he switched from 35 to 55. Seems like he's a fixture on kickoff. Did he Did he have to make that switch because Jonah wears 35? Or? Well, we can switch out jerseys every play, or we can slide him in a new number, and I don't think we're changing Jonah's number. So, um, you know, it's just it's part of it. He's a linebacker. 55 looks good on linebackers. Thank you, guys.